Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use Alesto. Alesto is a cloud-based video editor, but what really caught my eye about Alesto is that if you look at it, it looks so much like pro editing apps like Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. But what makes Alesto so different from those pro apps is that it's designed for noob editors. It's got a really simple drag and drop workflow that anyone can make a video in just minutes, but it's also packed with a ton of features, including a voiceover tool, lots of effects and filters, transitions, and most excitingly, stock media that you can access right in Alesto. You don't have to go outside the platform to access a ton of stock music cuts, stock video shots, or stock images. And it has an AI image generator as well. There's a lot you can do in Alesto without knowing too much. And if you like what you see today, AppSumo is currently running a lifetime deal on Alesto. Look at these two plans. What a steal. All right, let me show you what Alesto can do. So here's the Alesto platform. When you first log into it, let's start by creating a project. You're going to want to give your project a name, and then you're going to want to select your video's aspect ratio. So I'm just going to go 16 by 9, which is the traditional widescreen format, and let's hit the Create button. Now let's take a quick look at this user interface so you know everything that you're looking at. On the left side are a lot of tools. This is where you can access your own media, stock images, stock video, stock audio, text effects, stickers, transitions, filters, effects, masks, and your color correction tool. This window here is where your media will live, and there's going to be a bunch of tools that appear in this window as we work. This window is your player window. This is where you can play back the video that you've created as you create it. And down here is your timeline. It's sort of a linear representation of the sequence in which you drop in your shots. So let's start by uploading our media. You could start by hitting this upload button or you can just drag and drop your media right into this window and you'll see instantly the upload starts. Now you can only upload five clips at a time, but they upload really quickly as you can see. And once they're finished, you get an actual preview of the shot. So now that my media has been uploaded, let me show you how to bring your first clip into your timeline. I'm just going to select this first clip and click on it with my mouse button. And I get this cut and preview pop up window and I can use these yellow handles to trim this clip so I can just select the part of the clip that I want to use because this clip is quite long and I don't want to use all of it in my finished video. Once I'm satisfied, I just hit the confirm button and now that video clip is like attached to my cursor. I'm not pressing any buttons here on my mouse. I'm just dragging my mouse around and I can position this clip anywhere I want in the timeline. I'm going to bring it all the way to the beginning and then I'm going to click my mouse button to actually set it in position. You can see that that clip has now populated my viewer window. Now by grabbing what's called the playhead, which is this white bar in my timeline, I can scrub back and forth and take a quick look at my video. Or if I want to play it back in real time, I just hit the space bar. If I felt like this shot was too long and I wanted to trim it, I could just hover my cursor over the edge of the clip, hold down my mouse button and trim it. Now, if I wanted to make more modifications to this clip, I could just double click it here in the timeline and I get all of these other options here. I can speed it up. I can apply filters and effects. Let's apply the faded art effect. And now my video really looks treated. And if I wanted to adjust the audio on just this clip, I could crank down the volume all the way. Let's go back to our media and I'm going to drop in another clip again. And on this one, I'm not going to apply on any settings, but what I do want to do is show you how to add a transition between these two clips. Let's head on over in our sidebar here to transitions and I can drag, let's say a lens flare transition right between these two shots. And then if you look here closely in our timeline, you can see this icon here that indicates we have applied a transition and I can change the duration of that transition. So it either happens faster or slower. Let's make it eight tenths of a second and play it back. Do you see how easy that was? Now I do want to show you some of the other highlight tools in Alesto, but before we get to that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, AppSumo. AppSumo is a daily deals website 
for digital products that help you with your productivity and your creativity. AppSumo has the best deals on the internet. If you're shopping around and looking at a specific product, I would definitely check out AppSumo and see if it's listed on there before you buy it anywhere else. AppSumo has great tools like Alesto that we're looking at today. I will link to AppSumo down below if you wanna check it out for yourself. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to head on over to stock videos and I can search for royalty free videos right here in this search bar. I'm going to search for concert crowd. I want to make sure I'm on the landscape aspect ratio so it matches the rest of my shots. And I just hit the enter key and right away, all of these great stock shots are available to me. I'm going to select this one to add it to my library. I'm going to hit the plus sign here. And then if we go back to our media, you can see that this new clip has uploaded into my media and I am going to select it, trim it up and add it to my timeline. Now it's not just stock video that you can access here in Alesto, you can grab some stock audio too. So let me head over to the stock audio menu. I'm gonna use the search term rock. Let's pick this first clip. I'm going to add the media to my library. Let's go back to media. And here is this music track, which I'm just going to drop into my timeline underneath my video. And of course it's too long, so I can just trim the end of it, double click it, and then apply a fade out at the end. Let's apply a text overlay to this project too. So I'm gonna reach for the texts tools. And there's a bunch of text effects to choose from. I'm going to pick this one here to add it to my track. All I have to do is hit this plus sign and it's going to drop it at the position of my playhead. So you can see my playhead here is at the end of my clips. If I hit the plus sign, it's going to position it after, which doesn't really make sense. I want it to be over top of my video clips so I can just reposition it by grabbing it and dragging it backward in my timeline and I can see how it looks over my clips. Now let's modify this text. I'm going to double click it. And in this window, it's going to bring up a bunch of options. So let's change what it says. Right here in my playback window, I can reposition it where I want it. And if I wanted to change the font, there's a lot of fonts to choose from, but I kind of like the font that they've used. Or I can upload my own font, which is nice. Now, what if I wanted to incorporate some still images into this video as well? You can do that with the stock images tool, but what's different about stock images is that it actually has an AI feature. So we're going to try that today. What we're going to do is describe an image that I want Alesto to generate for me that doesn't already exist. I actually want them to be only having black and white face paint like kiss. So let me make a modification here. This one is perfect. I asked for five people and it only gave me four, but that's okay. I'm not mad at it. I'm going to hit the plus sign to add it to my media. Go back to my media window and I'm just gonna drag this guy right in here. And I'm going to extend my text over that image and I'm going to extend the music as well. Another tool I wanna show you is the green screen tool here in Alesto. So I'm just gonna grab this clip and drag the entire thing right into my timeline. And I'm going to double click on it to open our tools and let's select master key. The first thing I'm going to do is grab the pen tool and I'm going to select the area which I wanna cut out. So all I have to do is hover it over the green part of the image and click on it. And you can see our subject is cut right off the background. I can fine tune using these sliders here. And then let me go back to my media and I'm going to drop this office shot right underneath our subject. So it looks like he's in this office. So I'm just gonna click and hold down my mouse button to drag it right into my timeline. And now he looks like he's in this office, but the office shot doesn't totally fill the frame. So I'm gonna double click on this image and on the zoom value, I'm just gonna arrow up on height and the width is gonna come right with it. And now it looks as though he is in this office, but if I wanted him to be standing more on the right side of the screen, I can just double click him again. And I can either use the position arrows here to fine tune, or I can just grab him right in the viewer and stick him where I want. Let's go back to my project media. And now I wanna show you how you can achieve keyframing here in Alesto. Keyframing means that you're changing Eclipse properties over time. So let's say I wanted to make a shot look like it was zooming in, even if the camera wasn't in fact zooming in, I can do that here in Alesto. I'm just gonna pick this shot here. We're gonna trim it up. I'm gonna drop it in my timeline. I'm going to double click on it to open up the settings. And now what I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to the beginning of the clip and I'm going to hit this add keyframe button on zoom. 
and then I'm going to move my playhead a little bit further down in my timeline and I'm going to add another keyframe and this time I'm going to type in a value of 130. So now you can see that my clip zooms in over time. Another great tool that I want to show you in Alesto is the voiceover tool. You can actually record voiceovers right here into Alesto while you play back your video if you want to talk along with your video that you've edited. So I'm going to cue up my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and I'm going to enable the voiceover tool at the top right of the UI. I'm going to mute the preview so I don't hear the music in the background of my recording and I'm going to record my voiceover. Here I go. Join us for an awesome rock show next Saturday. Once I'm done, I'm going to hit the confirm button and it's dropped it right here into my timeline. I'm going to reposition it more toward the middle of my video and I'm going to dial down the music a little bit and dial up that voiceover. And so now I've added a voiceover into my video right in Alesto. You never really have to leave this tool to get all of your video editing done. All right, so now that you've seen a lot of the tools that come with Alesto, I am going to export this one finished video that we made. So to do that, we'll just head up to the top right of the UI, hit export. We can give it a name and I can export all the way up to 4K. I'm going to stick with 1080. My output type could be either a QuickTime file, which is a movie file or an MP4. Let's change the code rate to high. All right, let's export this. All right, it's done exporting. Let's hit download and we're done. So that is how you edit on Alesto. If you want to check it out for yourself, don't forget I'm dropping it down in the comments. Thank you so much to AppSumo for sponsoring this video. You guys, I love hanging out with you. Thanks to everyone who watches to the end. I'll see you again.